A day after a violent mob of Trump supporters breached and swarmed the U.S. Capitol building, more than 800 members of the D.C. National Guard fortified the grounds with seven feet tall, non-scalable fencing. These personnel and this security measures will be in place for no less than the next 30 days. The Secretary of the Army spoke during a news conference about the breach today, alongside the Washington, D.C. mayor. What happened yesterday is textbook terrorism. And though she said the district and its Metropolitan Police Force called on the D.C. National Guard to help secure the perimeter yesterday around what began as a Trump rally down the street from the Capitol, both she and the Army say Capitol Police, which are responsible for the federal grounds, did not. There were uh, discussions previously with the Capitol Police and others and no requests of the D.C. National Guard were made. Uh, obviously, it is a different branch of government, so we have to be requested to come onto the grounds. Obviously it was a failure um, or you would not have had police lines breached and uh, people enter the, the Capitol building by breaking windows. No one was supposed to get that close to the doors and windows of the building. So that has to be thoroughly investigated, no doubt about it. Terrence Gaynor is a former Capitol Police chief who was at a loss to explain how planning left the federal officers so understaffed that they were forced to retreat until reinforcements arrived. We failed. We did not secure the Capitol. And people need to be held responsible and explain what went on. But the only explanation so far from the current chief, Steve Sund, is this statement praising the actions of officers. He says at least 50 were seriously injured by rioters wielding metal pipes and other weapons. But he did not address the lack of resources that left them vulnerable. I am calling for the resignation of the Capitol, the chief of the Capitol police, Mr. Sund. And Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is also among many members of Congress now calling for an investigation. Many of our Capitol Police just acted so bravely and so with such concern for the staff, for the members, for the Capitol. But there was a failure of leadership at the top of the Capitol Police. A failure that President-elect Biden says goes beyond a building and the people inside. Not only do we see the failure to protect one of the three branches of our government, we also saw a clear failure to carry out equal justice. As an example, Biden compared yesterday's police response to these images sent to him by his granddaughter of a large military presence used to secure the Lincoln Memorial this summer during a Black Lives Matter protest. She said, Pop, this isn't fair. No one can tell me that if had been a group of Black Lives Matter protesting yesterday, there wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have been treated very, very differently than the mob of thugs that stormed the Capitol. Now, in the last hour and a half, Chief Sund, as we referenced there, did announce that he will resign effective on January 16th. In doing so, he said that they had planned for a free, uh, free speech demonstration on Wednesday and did not expect a violent ter to turn into violence. Jana. It obviously did pretty quickly, and many of the images that we saw come out later in the day and today show that mob attacking the few officers that were there. Do we know about injuries, how many there were? Because we know there are some. Yeah, it's nearly 60 injuries that we heard, and as I mentioned, there were serious injuries. We did hear that there was one officer in critical condition. Now, some outlets have reported in the last few minutes that one of those Capitol officers has died. We're waiting for confirmation from our sources at NBC and the Associated Press for that, but we do know that at least they were in critical condition. Jana. All right. Thanks, Ken.